Hey everybody, I'm Rob. And I'm Lori Marie Jenkins. And we are both artists who have moved, moved to, to Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. That's right. We're down on the Plantel right now. Welcome uh, back. Yes, welcome back. The beautiful valley is behind us. We are sitting on the Plantel where the house is going to be. The house is going to be over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little video showing the walk from the casita down to the driveway. Yep. And the driveway down to, well, I guess not the driveway down to the Plantel. No, but you can see from the top of the driveway where where the Plantel is in relation to the casita. It's, it's just up the hill. But we just walked down the main road and then that's where the we hit the driveway and you guys will see in the bonus video. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it was a uh, we had a good week. We got a lot of a lot of fun stuff done, a lot of art stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so last let's see, last Sunday, um, I had some friends who were playing live music at um, a restaurant called the Beehive in Uvita. My first time there and went down on Sunday and just had a blast. So my friend Edmund and uh, his band uh, Alchemy, but uh, you know a lot of um, kind of cover cover stuff. But they're really good, and it was fun. It was fun just to get out of Dodge, and we hadn't hadn't left the house a lot because we've just been staying staying put arting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you can talk about the traffic if you want. Right. No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> and I stayed home and I taught an online class which was really delicious. I had, I don't know, maybe 15 people in the, on the Zoom class with me. So that was very, very fun. And Rob's been in, busy in his studio, enjoying mm -hmm. wood making, making tables, making uh, key, key holder, key oh, yeah, yeah. plaque. Right. Um, coconut bowls. Coconut bowls. You have the, go ahead. I finished our plant, the planting table. So mm -hmm. all using found wood so far, which is wonderful. Um, and so I, I, there's some, some other woods that I'll be using over, over time here, and so I'll, I'll show more of that in the future. Right. We do have a little video on the key ring rack. Yep, yep. So that'll be at the end of this video. Next week, I think we're doing the, um, the process of me making my coconut bowls, so that'll be fun. Uh, stay tuned for that one. Right. Sunday, we take a painting class. Down, yes. Down in Dominica. Yeah. What about Wednesday? You didn't talk about Wednesday yet. What was Wednesday? Your art date? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like Rob says, we've had a lot of art this week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, fun and stuff. Wednesday, I had a couple people over, and we did some eco printing and some uh, fabric collage sl slow stitching. So tell them what eco printing is. Okay, so eco printing is I use watercolor paper, and I um, put leaves between each page, so five to ten pages of watercolor paper. Uh, with leaves and then they're tied together and then I boil them for two hours in rusty water and then it comes out with the gorgeous uh, leaf mm -hmm. prints and nature 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 just nature prints. Yeah they're amazing they're amazing they're sometimes beautiful. the colors of the hibiscus and the flowers show up in the paper sometimes it's more gray but sometimes you'll have the yellows and the blues yeah. and and then she takes all those papers and uses them for other projects so yeah, we're having a blast using what materials are here. Right. Um, I, I yeah. just made a toilet paper roll book with elements from here. Leaves mm -hmm. and found objects and Little toilet, toilet paper rolls. Bits and bobs left from the, the guys doing their construction, uh -huh. rusty washers and pieces of metal. So it's, uh, you know, for found object artists like us, it's, there's, there's never any lack of materials. Right. <laughs> imagination. You need your imagination. Uh -huh. It turns into something pretty beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And then, like Laura Marie was saying, this coming Sunday, we've got a fun one coming. We're actually taking a painting class. Yes. Yeah. And um, so it's a woman, we have seen her work around the area, Dominical and Ovita. Her name is Pia, Pia Cat. Um, and uh, just an amazing painter, but she's teaching classes. And so we're taking a class Sunday morning and really we'll see exciting. what's up. Yep. It'll be fun. It Acrylic looks like- Acrylic painting class. Yeah, she yeah. uses a lot of bright colors. Uh -huh. Fingers and um, palette knives and just, yeah, really yeah. textures it'll, and it'll stuff. It'll be fun, something new for us. So we'll show you the results of that. Yep. So that's Sunday. And it seems like there was something else I wanted to say. There were a couple of questions. Uh, one was, we've answered in the video uh, mm -hmm. as to where the casita is, where we park, uh, where the driveway is. Uh, another question was when we had the guys living with us, which we will have them again. Yeah, for a short while. Yeah, for a short while. Um, their bathroom was hooked up to the septic 
system. Yeah. So it was a real shower and mm -hmm. bathroom and yeah. yeah, it wasn't like a porta potty. The way you see in the States, they bring a porta potty but, but they don't have the people living there either. Right, right. So. They're not staying there every night. And, yeah. And so yeah, it's it's a it's a really good system. And eventually, when we have the plans together for the big house down here, um, there's actually going to be another cabina built, like right over here. And that's where the guys who are building our house will live. Um, it's just too far from up top. Um, to keep an eye on things and just all the walking back and forth. So <laughs> we are going to have some guys probably moving back in up top for, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks uh, because we're having drainage work done here. And um, anybody who's been to Costa Rica knows how important drainage work is. Right. Or anybody that's watched our videos knows right, how important right. the drainage yeah. is. <laughs> so we're getting um, sort of concrete half tubes put down along the edges of the driveway. They're called cunetas. And they're basically just rain troughs. Uh -huh. And so when the water comes down off the hill, it's diverted into those. And then we've got these big concrete boxes with um, pipes underneath the driveway. So the water ideally goes where we direct it to. And so we have less issues with water just running over and knocking trees and dirt down. Right, I laughed when he said that it's kind of a walk uh, between the casita and here. We got down here with Hudson and the camera mm -hmm. and didn't have the memory card in the camera. So back I went up and over <laughs> and got the memory card and back and down. So <laughs> they don't need to do that while they're working down here. Right, yeah, uh, and we'll probably make a sort of a shortcut path up the hill here uh, between the casita and the casa just to make travel a little bit easier for us yeah. during construction but that that's not done yet so one step at a time Come here. but uh, yeah the plans are hi. good we have the uh, engineering the soil engineering for down here so we know the best places to build how, how firm the soil is and how deep we need to go for foundations so a lot of really good information which all goes to the architect with our drawings and um, wait 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 what's Tuesday Tuesday. What's, what's Tuesday? Possibly? Tuesday? What's happening what? Tuesday? <laughs> as far as we know, fingers crossed, all of our stuff from the States will be here. What? <laughs> Delivered to our door. And so that is the last of our goods from Estado, California. Estados Unidos. Yep, yep. So right? some furniture, some some things that we probably won't even get into yeah. until we move into the casa. So we've got, we already got dishes and a microwave and stuff up top. Yeah, for the casita, yeah, but yeah. It, we'll be glad to see everything for the big house. Yeah, yes, exactly that. And there's a, a fair amount of my tools in there, and since I have a, a studio space to play in, that'll be great. Yeah. So, yeah, hope, hopefully everything comes safely, undamaged, all that jazz. And um, so we'll, again, we'll let you know about that. Yeah. And then one other thing I wanted to touch on, for those of you who have been following along with the move to Costa Rica and who are curious about some of the things here, one thing that, that we're learning more about as we get here are fees and things that need to be paid at certain times of the year. And we've touched on a few of these. Um, Marchamo is like the car registration. Everybody has to pay it. And it's due by the first of the year. And, they and don't... it's very like very much like the registration. Yes, it is. It is. Only it's like the first of the year for everyone, right? Right, first yeah. of year for everyone. And so you can start paying it, I think, the end of November. But if you don't pay it by the January 1st, the cops are out in force. And if you don't have that 2023 sticker on your car, it can be trouble. They'll take your license plates. It takes a long time to get them back. You <laughs> they pay take fines. your license plates. Yeah, they do. Okay. <laughs> and it might take a month or two to get them back. So... Um, it's one of those things where you just have to know. Um, they're not sending you a reminder. They're, you know, right. and so we've got a number of uh, WhatsApp groups and there's some fantastic people giving out great information about what needs doing and when and don't forget this and your corporation taxes are due and, and then by March your property taxes are due. So um, there's no mail here, so there's no mail reminders sent. and. Um, and remember when our water meter was taken because our, we didn't pay our water bill? Mm -hmm. Same thing. You don't pay your uh, Marchamo. Marchamo? Yeah, Marchamo. Marchamo, and they take your license plate, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and they don't give warnings. It's like right. if you don't pay, they just they will shut your electricity off. They will take your water meter and shut it off. So it's, you kind of, you know, 
it's it's in the states it's similar it's like ignorance of the law is not an excuse right and so and they don't hang a little paper thing on the door that says you have 24 hours to yeah go. yeah no the third notice we're shutting it <laughs> off it's like no red notice <laughs> well i think sometimes when you haven't paid for a while it's like you you should know yeah right <laughs> but uh yeah you know we're learning about these things and then we have taxes coming up in the states and uh, this will be our first year doing that right so that'll be an adventure don't think we have to pay taxes here in costa rica because we're technically not earning any money here but more questions we can get into yep and so you know everything we learned this year will make next year that much easier Oops, sorry. and uh, so far we haven't had any any big stopping of anything it's just oh, okay well learn this and do it and right. figure out where to go to pay it and and all that yep but yep and having the um the costa rican banking account yes that helps a lot yeah yeah because you know, we can do the online banking and such makes payments a lot easier here yeah because uh banco de costa rica is one of the banks where you can go and pay bills you can't at all bill uh, at all banks like Banco Nacional doesn't do that. Um, so yeah, you definitely go to Banco de Costa Rica and pay. we paid our Marchamo there for our car and we pay other bills, but the lines can be pretty crazy long. So mm -hmm. online bill pay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and Absolutely. I know it's really hard to get a bank account here if you are not a resident like we are. And uh, I've heard people talk about that and I, I don't know much about it. I just, I've heard it's challenging. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for us, so that was good. It was great, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's good, that's good. And then we got big plans next weekend. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that next week. Yep, we'll talk about that next week. Perfect. Sounds good. We don't want to give you everything at once. Right. Yeah, yeah we'll it's, life is life is ongoing here and we're excited about the progress here. And then that excitement is also tempered by the fact that it's just it's it's gonna unfold in its own time. So we've got a really good Costa Rican tranquilo attitude <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm on vacation every day so uh-huh yeah it's yeah. great yeah. it's like if the house takes a little longer that's just more time to play in our studio yeah so. we love the casita so yeah it what's is the big deal it's great yeah it's great get to take hudson down here and he can run around uh -huh. and yeah we've gotten to see a few friends houses oh my gosh fun we, ideas yes and we saw or somebody saw deer here oh yeah we saw pizotes here. oh my gosh P pizote is the costa rican name they're coada mondays so they're kind of like big, long-tailed, long-nosed raccoonish guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the males are solitary, and the females and babies travel together. And I saw a pack of them just down the hill here, and 20 or 20 or more of them. So the first time we've seen them here on our plantel, but we saw a pack about that big when we were at That's Hacienda Baru two mm -hmm. weeks ago. So very fun. So deer and agouti. Hudson, which are little like guinea pig things Thank you. and then pizotes and then of course the birds Good boy. we got hawks and toucans we just saw an oropendula right now yes. and butterflies hummingbirds we see all the time yeah so it's pretty lovely i think spending more time down here we're going to be able to see a lot more of what goes on in the valley and uh, that and get some good binoculars right <laughs> absolutely yeah okay important thing all right good feel good feels good Okay, Thank well, you for all we of the questions <laughs> and comments. Um, Lori Marie does the lion's share of answering all of those, but we also try to answer uh, multiple questions. If, if a bunch of you guys have the same question, we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, keep, keep giving us the thumbs ups and uh, keep watching. Thank you so much for your support on our yeah, journey. Yeah, and come back next week. We'll have a painting to show you. Oh, yes. That'll yes. be fun. Two paintings, one each. Yes, that, well, at least his. <laughs> She'll, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> she'll be. She'll have two done in the time it takes me to do one. I'll be uh, putting underpants on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, supporting us on our journey. We'll see you next week. Pura vida. Adios. Ciao. Okay. Well, thank you for all the questions. Uh, Laura Marie does a fantastic job of answering them and try to come back to things when we need to. Is that your phone? Here. Huh? Hello? <laughs> Spotify. I don't know. <laughs> Must have. <laughs> Turned it on by mistake. <laughs> and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising. So we're visiting our friend here in Platanillo. 
who has just an amazing view off their backyard. And so just kind of scanning over the valley view and you can see the sun going down there over the Pacific. So just, just a wonderful spot. Great to be here. So we got Michael, executive chef here at Beehive. With an amazing looking roast pig. So some of you have asked about parking here. This is our front gate. And there's the house and there's the road. So we have plenty of room right here when we pull in off the road. And then same thing on the other side when we pull in we got lots of space here, so we can pull in and stop before the, uh, uh, we need to open the gate. So we're still, still walking down towards the plantel, and you can see the lovely valley view here. But it's probably, I don't know, one or two hundred yards, if that, 150 yards. And so we're coming down the road. And then you see Lori Marie down there. She got Hudson and our camera. We're gonna do our video on the plantel. But what's happening here, this is the driveway. Comes right off the road here. And we got a nice flat spot with the gravel so we can park. And, and then here is the gate. Our private property, my lovely, beautiful bride. And then there it is. So down there's the plantel, up there's the casita, and that's where everything is. So here's another fun project I am playing with in my studio. Uh, and what I've got here is, I've got a piece of cedar, and this board is actually a cutout from the big shelf that I built for our kitchen. And so I had a cutout that I made for the light to come down on the stove. And so this piece of cedar, live edge cedar, a lovely little piece here, um, it was just kind of left over. And so one thing we have done here is we've accumulated a lot of different keys. And so they're just kind of sitting out on tables. And I thought it'd just be fun to do a little organizer. And so this is a perfect size piece of wood. Um, basically all, all you need are some cup hooks and so these are little three-quarter inch cup hooks pretty small and so these guys um, will be put in here and so what I have done is I've already marked out um, I got a, a set of these little key rings with tabs and so these little tabs come apart and you can write in here and so I thought that the better idea instead of writing on this board about what uh, what keys go where is just to use these little tags and then I can uh, put that down and write what each thing is and so basically to start off here I had sort of a flared edge and the simplest way to just clean this up and make the whole thing a little bit more organic I used my little uh, my little scroll saw and so scroll saw it's really nice for curves curved cuts and all I did is I made a couple of marks curved this sanded it around a little bit smoother because this whole thing was already curved to uh, to match the uh, the rest of the curves in the kitchen shelf right so that's done this is a guy I've already sanded down quite a bit and so what I did yesterday is I laid out all of the keys and key rings I have and how they're going to hang. This is the top of the board here. This live edge is the bottom. So I just kind of laid them out here, put a little mark. And then one thing that I did was I took the, um, since you can see how small this uh, cup hook is, I didn't want to go through the board. So once I had all of these little spots marked where I was going to put the key rings, and uh, I think there were eight, eight of these little tabs with a key ring on them that came in a set. But I have a couple of um, 
larger key rings. And so I think there's going to be 10, 10 little hooks on here. And uh, I'm not going to put them all out right now, but you can basically see what's going on. So once these guys were laid out and I knew where I was going to put the cup hooks, then um, I actually took a picture of it so I can put them all back in the same place. And then to drill the hole for the tiny little cup hook um, without going through, I took the right size drill bit here and you can just kind of, uh, you kind of size it up based on the drill bit size. But the key thing is to take a little bit of masking tape. And so I've got this, the depth of the threads on the cup hook and I can see how deep that is. And then I've got this piece of masking tape that I just wrap around the drill bit. So when I'm drilling, I get to that point and stop. And so it's, it's just a way to ensure that I'm not going through the whole piece of wood. Now this will be mounted on the wall so it wouldn't really matter, but it's just uh, it's like a, um, a nice little tip if you don't want to go through a piece of wood, mark your drill bit and stop when you get to the tape. So that's basically done. All the holes are marked, all the holes are drilled, and then next steps for me are twofold. One is to sand this down a little bit more. I've already got it kind of rough sanded, and I want to finish sanding this uh, before I varnish it. I will varnish it. It helps it keep clean, and it also just protects it from mold and mildew here in Costa Rica. And the second thing is on the back, I'm going to put hangers. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet, so I'll get back with that in the next video. It's either going to be a couple little pieces of wire back here held on by screws so that it uh, rests. I think one hanger in the middle is going to make it too wobbly. And another option I'm looking at is an old piece of rusty chain which it hangs from. I like the idea, but to have this chain up, whatever screw is in the wall would be visible. So just aesthetic decisions, but I'll come back when we're ready to uh, varnish and put the other stuff on. Okay guys, the key shelf or the key holder is all ready. It's drilled. I've got a chain for the top, which I'll show you later, ready to varnish. So I've got my uh, paintbrush. What I'm using is a speed dry urethane varnish. Uh, Barnice is what it's called here in Costa Rica. Um, I haven't played around too much with other finishes. I like this a lot though. Um, this piece of cedar will need at least two coats. Depending on how it looks, I might do three. And so do one coat, light sand, give it a little bit of tooth for the next coat, and we'll see how it looks after that. And then very important here, I like to use rubber gloves. Just makes it a lot easier because you always end up touching, touching something. So it makes the hand clean up easier as well as just tossing these when you're done. All right, so I'll show this to you when we're done. Here's the first coat of varnish on the key ring holder. And so the first coat looks pretty good. Usually your first coat of varnish is gonna be uneven. So you'll have areas of wood that are thirstier than others, uh, different grains, it's not gonna look completely even. So we're gonna put a second coat, I'll probably put a third coat on, but important to do in between these coats is take a fine sheet of sandpaper. This is a 220. Um, you can go down to 300 or uh, 400 grit. It's just real fine. Basically, it's to take off uh, brush marks and burr, uh, little burr marks from the wood being raised. So you don't want to go heavy. All you want to do is just a real light coating here. Kind of feel, you can hit around the edges a little bit. This is also a good time to take care of any drips. If I have big drips on here, sometimes I can sand through them. Sometimes I'll even just cut them off. Um, did a pretty good coat here, so I'm not seeing much of that. Definitely got a, a rough spot here, got a rough spot here, and that's just the nature of this piece of wood. So, pretty simple. Take your time on these steps because it's just gonna make such a big difference in the finished product. Um, it, it's really easy to want to go and rush through all this, but with the finished product, um, for me, doing two coats of varnish looks pretty good usually, 
And then if it's a if it's something just for the shop, that's probably okay. But if it's something I'm gonna have on display in my kitchen or house, you know, the three coats is gonna be good. You'll have to judge for yourself. So you see that uh, some of these areas, I'm hitting a little bit harder with the sandpaper. And that's just because the, the wood has popped up a little bit if it was dry, and then it gets the moisture from the varnish, it just swells out a little bit. So you, see, you, you feel some of the grain. And the other reason to do this is it roughs up the surface of the varnish a bit, it gives it some tooth, so the next coat of varnish will stick. You can kind of even hear the, the scratchy sound when I hit a rougher area. And that's about it. That's gonna be about it. Got a little sharp spot there. So I'm not using water on this, just taking a dry towel, getting this dust off. If you had a little blower, if you had a little uh, compressor, you can blow all that dust off pretty easy. I don't have one here. And I'm going to get this edge a little bit more, this cut edge here, it's always a little bit uh, uneven because it's not like the flat surface. It tends to drip a little more on the back side. I'm not worried because that's hidden against the wall. Some projects you actually want to seal the back, but here I want it to be able to breathe. So edge isn't perfect, but I like it. See a nice little shine there. One spot I want to hit a little more. So some of these drier spots, I don't know, you can see this right here. That's just the wood and it's a little bit different grain. So this tells me that one more coat probably won't do it. So two more coats and it'll be as shiny as the rest. Well, here is my finished piece of cedar. Looks nice, varnished. Got the little live edge down here. And now I'm gonna put it all together. Got the hanging chain, got all the keys here. So basically I'm just gonna take all these guys. They're already drilled, they're already marked. I'm gonna put them where they go. Lay it all out and, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. There. It is finished cedar keychain rack. So keep them all straight. Got little uh, plastic doobie guys to write on so we know what's what. And so fun use of an old piece of wood, found piece of chain, and all done.